Hi everybody, this is U.S. Immigration Lawyer Michael Ashuri, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about the executive order that President Trump signed today, which is impacting non-immigrant visas. So, really quickly, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michael Ashuri, and I'm a U.S. Immigration Lawyer based in Los Angeles, California. At my law firm, we regularly post immigration videos to keep you updated and informed with what's going on in immigration. So if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. Now let's get started. Today, President Trump signed an executive order which is temporarily restricting the issuance of non-immigrant visas and we're going to get into the details about everything that this executive order does but the first thing that we need to know is why is this happening and the reason is that due to COVID-19 the United States is facing record unemployment numbers the the level of unemployment that we're experiencing is almost unprecedented and President Trump is signing this executive order in order to encourage um, U.S. employment, uh, domestic employment. So that's the reason why. Now, what is specifically happening in this executive order? So the first thing that this executive order does is that it extends the executive order that was signed back in April of 2020. So for those of you that don't know, um, back in April, two months ago, President Trump signed an executive order which suspends the issuance of immigrant visas. Now, that executive order was set to expire in 60 days, which would have been today. But today, as part of the executive order that President Trump signed today, he extended the previous executive order to last until the end of this year, December 31st, 2020. So that's the first thing that this executive order does. The second thing that this executive order does is that it suspends the issuance of certain non-immigrant visas. The non-immigrant visas that are being targeted are the H-1B visa, the H-2B visa, the H-4 visa, the J-1 visa, with certain exceptions, and the L-1 visa. In addition to those visas, the derivative beneficiaries, so the dependents that would accompany on those visas, are similarly excluded. Of course, for H-1B, we mentioned H-4 already, but for J-1s and L-1s and H-2Bs, their dependents are also included within this um, executive order. Now, what specifically is happening is that this executive order suspends the issuance of new visas to people that are applying for visas under these categories. So, um, who's, who's being targeted? The people that are being targeted are people that are outside of the United States that do not have a visa already. Both of those prongs must be met for this executive order to target you. You must be outside of the United States and you cannot have a visa. So who's not targeted by this executive order? The people that are not targeted by this executive order are people that are inside of the United States. So if you're inside of the United States, this does not affect you. Also, if you're outside of the United States, but you already have a visa, this executive order does not target you. Okay, so let's really quickly recap. 
This executive order is impacting and targeting people that are outside of the United States that do not have a visa. If you're inside of the United States, this executive order does not directly impact you. And if you're outside of the United States and you do not have a visa and you do have a visa, this executive order does not impact you. Also, another group of people that are not impacted by this executive order are people that are applying for any other type of non-immigrant visa. For example, if you're applying for an E2 visa or an O1 visa or a P visa or any of the other number of non-immigrant visas that are not specifically mentioned in this executive order, that is okay. Those visas will still be processed once the consulates are resuming in-person visa services. So um, now again, what we've covered so far is what's going on with this executive order, who's being impacted, and who's not being impacted. Another important question that I want to answer is how long is this executive order in place for? So the language in this executive order is states that the executive order will last until December 31st, 2020. So the language says that the executive order should last through this entire year. But an important point that I want to mention is that this executive order also leaves open the possibility of extensions to this executive order. So it's possible that this executive order could last more than the end of the year. So that's an important point that I wanted to mention. Okay, so now we know how long the executive order is set to last for. Now, I want to mention a very important point about exceptions. So in this executive order, there are two big exceptions that are mentioned for people that... Uh, again, that are exempted from this executive order. And the two groups of people, um, two, I should say two, there's more that are mentioned, but the two that I want to discuss are people that are working in the national interest. So if the services that you're, that you're going to be doing in the United States are in the national interest, then you're exempted from this executive order. Also, if you're going to be providing services to assist in the U.S. food supply chain, there's also an exception for you in this executive order. So people that are going to be working in the national interest and people that are going to be working in the U.S. food supply chain. Those are the two ex exceptions um, that I want to mention about this executive order. Of course, there's other exceptions for lawful permanent residents, and so on and so forth, but I wanted to specifically mention those two. Okay, so now we know um, we know the details of the executive order. We know who's, who's affected, who's not affected, how long it's going to last for, and we also know some exceptions. Now, I think it's very important in this video that we talk about some good news because, you know, with this executive order, it's, it's very easy to be um, distressed by the news and to be saddened and to be scared or nervous. So I think it's really important to talk about some of the good news about this executive order. And the good news that I want to mention is that the executive order is much more limited um, than some of the rumors that were floating around. One of the rumors that was floating around was that... Um, the H-1B filing fees were going to shoot up to $20,000. Fortunately, we have not seen that happen. Another one of the rumors that we heard was that H-4 EAD, that's the work authorization for H-4 visa holders, would be eliminated. We have not seen that happen. Another rumor that we heard was that F-1 visa holders would be affected but this, this executive order does not target F1 visas. Um, and the list goes on. Another thing that we heard um, that was that this executive order could affect people that already had visas. 
and it would pre potentially prevent them from entering the United States. But that's not the case. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this video, this executive order does not target people that already have a visa. Those people can presumably still enter the United States. Another piece of good news is that this executive order does not target people that are already inside of the United States. So if you're already in the, in the United States, you could do a change of status, you could do an extension of status, and any of these other services that are done inside the United States through USCIS can still be conducted and are unaffected by this executive order. So for example, if you're inside the United States on a B1, B2 visitor visa, you can still do a change of status to L1 status. Um, even though L1 visas are currently suspended, the, the issuance of L1 visas are currently suspended outside of the United States, you could still, if you're in the United States, do a change of status to L1 status locally. So that's another very big piece of good news. Um, again, another, another good, if you, if you want to look at some more good news is that really there's only, you know, four non-immigrant visa classifications, four to five that are targeted by this um, executive order where, again, as we mentioned, there's a number of other non-immigrant visas that you could still potentially apply for. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope that helps to um, put things into some, some better perspective and helps to brighten up your assessment of this um, executive order. Another thing that I want to mention is that um, I'm going to be recording a video where I discuss some strategies for people that are outside of the United States and to, to be able to kind of carry out your immigration goals, even in light of this executive order. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. The hit, you know, being a, being a subscriber to our channel is the best way to stay updated with the different videos that we're putting out. And again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be recording a video on some strategies to um, be able to, you know, go forward with whatever your immigration goals are and different strategies in light of this executive order. So again, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, Definitely please go ahead and share this video with them and share the knowledge to help empower other people because um, that's essentially what we want to do. If you haven't yet done so already, go ahead and hit the, hit the like button. When you like this video, it really helps us out. Um, and yeah, as always, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, I regularly review the comments. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.